Greetings. I am Pastor David Hewitt of King of Glory Lutheran Church in Carmel, Indiana, and I welcome you to our latest Boost from the Bible, number 34, where we gather together to delve into the depths of Holy Scripture, always finding there God's wisdom and God's love during this COVID time. So let us begin. I am wondering if any of you have heard about the great Jewish biblical leader, Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah was originally a member of one of those many Jewish families still exiled from home many years after the Jews were forced to go live in Babylon, the great exile, around 587 BC. Now, from 444 BC, many years later, 432 BC, 12 years, Nehemiah served under the Persian emperor as governor of Judah. He was an important figure in the history of the people of Israel, Nehemiah was, helping to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and guiding, along with Ezra, the people who were now back in Israel to rededicate them to the law of God that had been revealed to Moses on Mount Sinai. Nehemiah wrote a book about his experiences called Nehemiah, and that book is in the Old Testament. You know, I had always passed off Nehemiah as someone who was just a historical figure, someone without much personality, someone who was not a teacher of the faith like the prophets were, but I was wrong. To read the book of Nehemiah is to read a mainly historical account, yes, and some parts of that history are fascinating, but Nehemiah not only accomplishes things with his actions, Nehemiah tells us how he comes to his important decisions. And it all has to do with his relationship to his God. Now let me back up a bit and say, that what Nehemiah reveals is something that today we might jokingly call a superpower. In this day and age in which superpower, superpower movies and superhero movies are so popular, or at least they were popular before COVID came along. You know how many of us like to joke about having a superpower, whether it's a real talent or just a quirk that we have? I grew up uh, reading superhero comic books and imagining having a superpower. I wanted to have the superpower of telekinesis, the ability to move things with my mind. Well, guess what? I never got telekinesis. No. What would I describe Nehemiah's superpower as? Well, to put it in modern terms, I'd call it seeing around the corner, or looking ahead. Nehemiah not only could envision good things ahead if one worked for them, Nehemiah could also see bad things coming, uh, bad things coming if people were not adequately prepared. Let me give you a sampling of what Nehemiah is talking about using his own words, words that seem fairly modern to us even today. The book of Nehemiah begins with Nehemiah still living in Susa, S-U-S-A, the capital of the Persian Empire, and there he was serving as cupbearer at the royal palace. It is revealed to Nehemiah by his brother, who had gone back to Judah, and now that he'd come back to Susa, he told Nehemiah that things were not going very well back in Judah, even though some Jews had returned there and had been living there for a hundred years and had even rebuilt the temple 70 years ago. This brother of Nehemiah's told Nehemiah that the gates of Jerusalem were all, all of them broken down and all of the walls broken down. Nehemiah was dumbstruck by how bad it had gotten. He immediately prayed mightily to God bearing to God his soul. Then one day, 
Nehemiah tells us he served wine directly to the king. It was the first time he had ever been in the king's personal presence. The king asked young Nehemiah why he was so downhearted. So I will now read our boost for the week, which is from Nehemiah, coming up right after the king asked the question. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. So the king said to me, why is your face sad since you are not sick? This can only be sadness of heart. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city of Jerusalem, the place of my ancestors' graves lies waste? and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Then the king said to me, what do you request? So I pray to the God of heaven. And then I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor with you, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my ancestors' graves, so that I may rebuild the city. And the king, that's the end of the reading, by the way. And the king not only agreed to Nehemiah's request, but also ordered everyone in Judah to follow Nehemiah's orders, making him governor. And following Nehemiah's orders to put the walls of Jerusalem back up after they had been destroyed about 150 years earlier. But did you notice when I read what I read, what, Jer what uh, Nehemiah did, what Nehemiah did when the king asked Nehemiah what his request would be to the king. Nehemiah, in this high pressure moment, quickly prayed. And he prayed in a way that you and I can pray today. Now, this was no elaborate, long winded prayer, it was a short prayer. A short prayer asking for fast guidance from the Lord. And he got it. Can you imagine being the king at this moment? You casually ask Nehemiah what he wants, and there before your eyes, the young man pauses. Is it a pause for five seconds? Is it a pause for 10 seconds? 10 long seconds? In any case, Nehemiah paused to make a short prayer to God, and then God guided Nehemiah's mind and lips to make the perfect request, a request that may have changed the course of human history. For without Nehemiah's leadership, when he finally went to Judah, would there even have been a Jerusalem for Jesus to preach in and be crucified in? or in Israel for Jesus to have been born in? It's with these quick, in-the-moment prayers that we too can find the Holy Spirit really coming through for us, not just for Nehemiah. Yes, for us as well. Why? Well, because our life needs to be dedicated to God at all times, and not just during a worship service, or other obvious holy times. A short prayer for guidance may help you to do the right thing or say the right thing when it comes to making a snap decision. And in these strange times, you and I have been forced to make difficult decisions, decisions we have never had to make before, almost every day. Now, before I go on, I want to tell you that there are other places in the book of Nehemiah where Nehemiah lays out the exact same spirituality, the exact same moment-by-moment -moment prayer and reliance upon the Spirit of God. When Nehemiah first got to Jerusalem, for instance, the powerful people who were there already were astonished that the Persian king had put so much power in this new young governor's hands. But Nehemiah knew 
He knew that his royal decree was not enough to help him do what he wanted to do. God then gave him an idea which would help Nehemiah understand what we call today the lay of the land. Nehemiah tells us in chapter 2 of his book, verse 11, So I came to Jerusalem and was there for three days. Then I got up during the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. Nehemiah took that creative idea that God had put into his heart, secretly toured that city, and from that point on, knew exactly how all the city's walls could be rebuilt. We too need to look for ideas that God puts in our hearts and minds. We often need God's vast creativity in order to bolster our mind and heart as we seek to do God's will every day. Even on those confusing days that we have gone through already in this crazy year, 2020. Now, Nehemiah's approach to prayer in his life reminds me of a couple of passages in the New Testament. There are two places where Paul advises in his letters that all Christians pray without ceasing. Now, that's the kind of prayer that is mixed into every part of our daily lives. To pray without ceasing is to pray while we are working, to pray while we are driving, to pray even while we are in the middle of a dispute with someone else, to pray while we are thinking about tomorrow's events, and so forth. That's what Nehemiah did. He prayed without ceasing. He prayed about the future. He prayed to receive a certain kind of sight and insight Nehemiah prayed for a certain kind of superpower from God, the ability to see right around the corner in order to anticipate those events that were about to happen right around the corner. And God led and guided him down successful pathways. It reminds you of something Jesus once said. If you look in Luke chapter 12, verses 11 to 12, you'll find it. Jesus once proclaimed, when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. My friends, in these critical times, how wonderful it is to trust and have faith in a God who is able to give us such immediate help when we need it and such power when we feel powerless in many of these days. So let us not grow weary, but continue to rely upon God every minute of every day, relying on God's superpowers just as Nehemiah once did. Amen. Well, thanks for watching, the, watching this edition of Boost from the Bible. You may also go to our website, my church's website, kogcarmel.org, and find King of Glory's Sunday worshipses, worship services as well. Uh, our worship services are live at 10 a.m. every Sunday. Archived worship services can be found on the bottom of our website's first page as well. And we look forward to seeing you and joining me next Thursday or whenever you watch our boosts for another edition of Boosts from the Bible. And may God continue to bless you.